to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land here in Canberra and Australia, particularly the Ngunnawal and the Ngāpuri tribes. Also, I show my respect to the Crown Prince of Tonga, the Bodoa Ulkalala and his house here in Canberra, residing here, as well as the High Commissioner of Tonga to Australia, Princess Latu Fuitekatuahau, and all the lineages here in Australia and worldwide, especially Tonga, and all uh, leaders and Tongans from different walks of life, you are all welcome to our program, the storytelling of myths and legends. And we are focused on Tongan and Moanan myths and legends of the Maui's and myths in general within the Moana or Pacific region. Also, I welcome all of you and also my uh, guests for this afternoon, Luciane Tuita Nakaraftani, who is going to lead us to the world of uh, myths and legends uh, in Tonga and in Moana. Without further ado, I will pass on to Luciane to continue <coughs> and to start, uh, to start and continue rather, and then I'll follow accordingly. Uh, <coughs> before we go on to Luciane, uh, this is a first program for us to talk about um, myths and legends in the English language. We have been discussing uh, myths in general and myths in particular in Moana and Tonga in the Tongan language, but this is the first program to be led by Luciane with my uh, assistance and contribution to discuss myths and legends in Tonga, Moana and worldwide <coughs> in the English language and hopefully we're going to get something um, good and something very beneficial for all of us on this very important topic. <coughs> uh, I'll pass on to Sane to start and continue and as, and as I said, I'll follow accordingly. Thank you, Marlo Lusane. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, <clears throat> very lovely and warm welcome today. I'd just like to apologise first. I think um, everything else in the air I'm allergic to. So <clears throat> I beg your pardon if I have to disappear from the screen. It's because I'm trying to cope with what the air in Cambridge is doing. <clears throat> this very particular topic that we will be following through from today onwards, every second week, will be about myths and legends. And I guess I'll just start by saying this is a <clears throat> this was written in a book, one of the scholars. And he began by saying, in the beginning of time, when there was nothing on the surface of the earth, but in the underworld lived the Maui's. They were not doing much, but tended to their gardens and plantations. And I guess <clears throat> that paragraph just tells us of how we're going to be conducting this program from today and that's to bring to you some of the stories mm -hmm. some of the stories of the Maui's and there are so many different stories about the Maui's as we know mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think 
Myths and legends have been in this world forever and a day. Mm. And myths and legends have been told by many, many cultures in their own different ways. Mm. And I think myths and legends were there so that they could tell us <coughs> stories about what was happening at the time, you know, so that we'll have an idea of what was going on when you know, many years ago when the Maui's were around. Greeks share legends and stories similar to ours. We have the Maui who went down to get the fire from the underworld. That's right. The yeah. Greeks have Prometheus. Mm -hmm. We have stories about demigods, children of gods who had children apparently with earthlings or people who lived on earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they produced children that were called demigods. You know, Hercules mm. was one of those. One of those. He was yeah. the son of Zeus mm. <clears throat> and his mother was on earth. And so there are all the stories about, you know, especially in Polynesia about the Edmadipua lineage of gods mm. and that they came down to earth whether climbing a tree down to the earth or however other way they were coming to earth to have a look at the people on earth. So when these gods came down, they looked around and sometimes, like the story of Edmund he came and he saw this woman fishing and a rather beautiful woman, earthling, woman mm -hmm. who lived on earth, was fishing and he fell in love with her. Mm. And of course, had a child with her and he went back to heaven and left this woman and her child, and this child was our Eitu, the first ever Dudonga king. So this is what I believe myths and legends are about. They're not stories for us to say, oh, it's just old stories, they're not to be believed. Mm. You know, there's just old people telling stories. <clears throat> we know that myths and legends started because it was a way of the ones in the past to tell the story so that we have now can listen and can understand and pass those stories down to our families and to our children. It doesn't mean that we have to prescribe to the truth of these stories or these myths. These stories are just there. I remember um, listening to a lecture by one of our very renowned um, Joseph Campbell mm. and he was saying you don't have to prescribe to anything that you hear and say oh I truly believe that or I don't believe that it is a story that someone has given you it's like when you go to a restaurant and you look at the menu and the menu tells you that there's steak and you can have mm. this steak now all it is you're not looking at the steak but you're looking at this menu and it's telling you that there's going to be steak. Mm. And if you order that steak, that's what's going to come onto your plate. It's you right, have no like, idea. Mm. It's like a pointer. That's right. Mm. It just says, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't pick up the menu and eat it and taste it to know, oh, yes, yes, mm. that's going to taste like steak. No, you're just looking at this thing that says there is going to be steak. So you order your steak and you sit at your table and hope to goodness that when the plate comes back, there is going to be steak and it's going to taste like steak. And I think, uh, Lucy, it's, um, I mean, with this program, we will attempt to tell uh, our myths and legends in their own words and in their own meanings. Eh? And, and I think, apart from us, uh, you know, put interpretation on them, as, as you have said. The menu is a pointer to point to the food. Eh? And, and, and the myths and legends in themselves, they are pointed to something else within you know, our ancient society. And our role also in this program is to try to go from the menu to uh, the food. Eh? The menu to the food. Yeah, that's an analogy. Yeah. And and I guess the menu to the food, you know, you either accept it and you say it's 
very tasty, or you taste it and think, mmm, doesn't really taste like how I thought it would. So <clears throat> this is why I, I, I brought out the idea of you prescribe to the notion of myths and legends are there to tell us the story of what happened in the past. Myths and legends are there maybe as moral teachings of how we should behave That's and right. how we should mm -hmm. not behave because mm -hmm. some of the myths and legends that we know of are about naughty demigods, mm -hmm. naughty gods, mm -hmm. you know, when they did the wrong <laughs> thing and, and the main gods punish them because they did the wrong thing. So I guess it's that prescription that I prescribe to is that these are stories, extremely important mm -hmm. stories of our past. You know, if we don't um, listen and, and you know, get to know some of these stories so that we can pass them on, they will become lost and they are history. And, and we, they are we'll, part we'll, of history. We will we'll lost too. <laughs> we will be a little bit lost because yeah. there is that notion how can you go forward if you don't know your past, mm -hmm. you know? I, you know, it is so important. It's like, you need to know your, you know, your family. You need to know your bloodlines so that you have an idea of who you are and where you situate yourself in this world. If you don't know, how can you tell your children, oh, um, my great-grandfather was this and that, or my great-grandmother did this, or my grandfather was a musician, that is why I play the piano well. You know, these are all about stories of the past. The myths and legends are there as a tool That's right. for us to mm. take notice of what happened in the past. During these mm. programs about myths and legends, we are going to be talking about how they brought food into Tonga or into Samoa. Mm. You know, how the Kumala or the Kumra or sweet potato came. How many yams oh, came? Yams. You know, where were they planted? How did the bananas get to Ata? You know, to that beautiful island. So these are all storytelling. Mm. And storytelling is about stories that tell us about what is. You know, when you think about when you think about our 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 myths of creation. You know, they talk about that there was nothing. And apparently, apparently, um, Tangaloa had, had asked someone to go and see if there's anything. Look down and see what there is on earth. And he reported to a Tangaloa that there was nothing down there except a shoal. And as we know, a shoal is just a very, uh, I, I guess not very deep water, so it was a, you know, just sure. a shoal, yeah. sandy yeah. shoal down there, yeah. nothing else, and, <clears throat> and all of a sudden there was a bar of sand that started to appear, and finally a sandy island, mm. and apparently this was the land of Ata, near Tomatapu. So when Tangalo gods heard that there was nothing but a shoal, or just a sandy shoal, um, Tangalo Tufunga, who was the god and also a carpenter. That's Atta there. Yes. Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a picture of Atta as it is now. But when the gods looked down, there was just a sandy little beach. Now, of course, look at it. It's a very high uh, island. So apparently... That's how they look at it. A, a little bit the like gods. that, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Tangalo the carpenter, apparently... Because he's a carpenter, you know when carpenter says chips of wood and Tangalo de Funga. Yes, Tangalo de Funga means Tangalo the carpenter. Mm. So he poured the chips and scraps from his workshop onto the region of Earth and he created apparently an island named Ewa, one of the islands in Tonga. And then another Tangalo sent down some vegetation for the island of Ata. But there were still no people on these islands. So the first three men of the island were created by Tangalo, one of the gods, who broke off a piece of a root of a vine, thus turning it into a maggot. And he broke the maggot in two. And each part became a man. One was called Kohai. Who yeah. is it? And the other part of the maggot was called 
Goal. It is I. It is very. Uh, I found that really interesting, Sio, because it's very philosophical. Those names. It, of it, it is uh, profoundly philosophical. Profoundly. Yeah. That's the word. Profoundly. Yeah, profoundly yeah. philosophical. Yes. Kohai, who is it? Koao, it is I, it's me. And then we'll go to the third bit. Mm, the third. And that became a third man, the fragment. Mm. Momo. Momo. The fragments fragment. of war. <laughs> Spoils spoil of, of war. war. <laughs> That's but you know, this, this, is, you know, this is our absolutely mm. um, way of telling the myths of how it all began in the beginning. Yeah, and, and uh, with our ancestors, Lucy, they look at those myths in their own words and they believe, they did believe that they were real, you know, even though, as you said, there were also moral messages behind it. But for us, our ancestors, and I think with this program, as you uh, have become outlining, that we, 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 we try to explain them in their own words. It's beautiful how they, how they look at them, you know. Uh, it might be miraculous or faimana to some, but for them, that's how the world was created and also other events as well, right? So that informs me that we had great philosophers yeah, in our past, mm, yeah. you know, who said these amazing things, you know, these three people, the first three men on this earth. Who is it? Kohai. Mm. It is I, Koao, mm. and the fragment Momo. Mm. So these three people apparently, you know, and, and there are great discussions about why these, why these names were given to the, by the gods to the first men of the world. Mm -hmm. Just like when we learn philosophy, we ask questions about why philosophers yeah. did and said things, and then scholars discuss these things. So mm -hmm. I think of the Tongan philosophers or students of philosophy in Tonga have been discussing Kohai, Koao, Komomo. And the three, you know? course, the three names, rather. <laughs> they are three <laughs> philosophical questions anyway in any culture and, and, and we have to dwell into the depth of the myths you know why they why call is it? why the first men three men in the island of Atta to take that myth, creation myth in, yeah, into consideration why they call them uh, who are you who is it it's me, it's I, and uh, I am the spoils of war, the fragment. The fragment. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, Momo. Momo. the youngest mm. was the fragment, you know, yeah. which, and, and we know the way the, our structure, you know, is in, you know, in Tonga. There's the eldest is always the most important, then the second, and the youngest is usually the naughty one. He's allowed to behave however way he behaves. The whole family love him and look after him. Mm. So when we look at this, it's, it's also very structural. Yeah. You know the way these these names were given to these three people by these ancient, yes. clever ones from the past. And and um, uh, in addition, Lucy, with our creation myths, we we have the uh, which is. Um, which is known as like the main creation, the Doia Futuna story, eh? the stone of Doia Futuna where everything, everything started. Eh? And then we, we have the fishing of the Maui, uh, of the islands, and then we have the story of the Tangaloa. Eh? So the main three uh, creation myths. Eh? Uh, and then uh, I think you have put up, Lucy, the photos of the Maui when they fish. Do you want, do you want me yeah, to, go, good to go there? To because go I there. Mean, yeah. As mm. we know, our fishing stories, Maui's fishing stories, all through Polynesia, and everyone has added their little bit. The Hawaiians have theirs, the Maoris have theirs, the Samoans have theirs, we in Tonga have ours. 
and our Samoan and our story includes, you know, Samoa. So it is a Polynesian story, the story of Maui. And Polynesia was one in way, way back in the past. Yeah. And we had one language way, way back in the past. Mm. So as we, you know, like ha what happens with migration, as we moved away from each other and we found new lands, our stories, as things happen with migration, start to change a little bit to suit our environment, to suit our new land, to suit the people that came and lived with us, to suit the way our social structure was. So I believe that that is how some of the stories of Maui became adaptable to each island culture and to each Polynesian culture as, they, as it was fragmented. Mm. Like Momo, eh? Our culture was fragmented, so, you know, the people decided to disperse and, and go to different lands like La Rotonga and Hamoa and, you know, Aotearoa, Hawaii. So then, at Tahiti. So this is where some of these wonderful stories, and we will listen to the Tongan version of Maui when he went to fish up and he went to get the hook and apparently he went to borrow the hook from a man in Samoa. Don't have to no. Yes, mm. and he he borrowed the hook and apparently the hook that he borrowed was a very, um, not a very nice hook Rotary. apparently. No. It, was a bit, it was a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit old, not the brand new hook, it was a bit old this hook. Rotary. And you know what I found interesting in some of the... There, there the is a meaning behind. Yeah. And apparently, yeah. one in the stories, but that was, I thought, I'm not surprised. One of the stories says that apparently when, when he went to get the hook, because, you know, um, the guy said, okay, the someone man said, okay, go and find yourself a hook out of my, you know, little container of hooks. And apparently when he went, his wife then said, here's a hook. So here we are being, the woman being blamed for Maui getting the old hook, mm. you know, or the hook that wasn't quite nice. And we think about, you know, when we go to the creation story in the Bible, Eve was blamed, you know, for what happened to young Adam. When Adam was told by God, they were both told, do not eat that fruit. Mm. And what happened? Eve decided to have a taste of this fruit and she liked it. So of course she wanted to share it with her husband. He didn't have to eat it, but he did. So when we look at the story of Maui, one of the stories said he was given this old rusty hook. Rusty, that's the word. <laughs> rusty, rusty hook yeah, yeah. By, by his wife. By the wife. <laughs> Plain the woman. Yeah. Then. And, and uh, maybe... <laughs> <laughs> the, another interesting thing, Lucy, mm -hmm. the name of the Samoan Kai was Tom. Was Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was a Tom who lived in Samoa. Well, so, but it's a reflection know, of our closeness and, and we a, were and one. And a people. reflection of how people take ownership of a story. You know, I'm sure the Samoan story is a bit different. Maybe their story is, you know, because apparently they went to Manua, you know, yeah. and, and met Tonga Fusifanua, which is a Samoan man. Yeah. And they promised him that the first island they fish up, they would call it Tonga. But apparently the first island they fished up with this rusty hook was, was Tokelau. Tokelau? Apparently to mm. this story. Mm. The, the rusty yes. one. Yes. With yeah. a rusty hook. So they moved <laughs> up and they fished up another, you know, land and it was Tonga. So they named him. Or Tonga named or Tonga, Atla? When, they named Tonga which one after, came first? Apparently, apparently, this is, as I said, Sior, everyone has, yeah, a, has, a, has a variant, right, yeah. you know, it's, about, contents, yeah. it's about when I mm -hmm. make Lou. Mm -hmm. You know, I might not make Lou how, like, how you make Lou, mm -hmm. or how my next door neighbor in Tonga makes Lou, I have a way of making loo, but it still ends up being a loo. 
Yeah, right. as, so as long we as long we all know about the form, the, the form of the story, this is, yeah. that there were yeah. not the details. Uh, yeah, not the details. That it was fished up. Some of the islands yes. were fished. Or and most it was of used. Them. I hope was used from Samoa. Mm. You know. Oh, uh, so Manoa. Anyway, Manoa was part of Tonga, and Tonga was part of Manoa. Yes, you know, as the stories go, <laughs> we came from there to here to there, yeah. and as we know. With DNA, some of the stories are starting to change with the DNA story, but they came we're, from not, us. we're not talking about details. That's right. We're yeah. talking about and who home. came from from and where? Who came first? And yeah. who, no, and who that's not the issue. The issue that we were one. Yes, yes. we were one. And Samoa and Tonga were two different islands of the same people. Eh? Yes, mm. and you know when we look at Hawaii, Hawaii. We are the same people. We look at the Maori, we are the same people. When we take DNA tests, our DNA appears in Hawaii, in Aotearoa, in Samoa. I thought I was totally Tongan before I took my DNA test. It so happens that I'm very, very Samoan, which surprised me. And then once I looked at my heritage, I realized that I had, of course, I was going to have a lot of Samoan blood. And like, Tongans, it's Samoans, Hawaiians, you know, the Maori, we all share the DNA. And if we That's look right. deeply and back enough, because we did, we traveled here and we traveled there. So this is just like the stories that we're going to be telling. Maui who went fishing and found Tonga. The Maui who went fishing in Aotearoa mm. and fished up some of the islands there. Yeah. The Maui who went fishing in Hawaii. The same yes. mouth. <laughs> so we can say that this, you know, this is, I think, you know, if women are watching and listening, this is a man's fishing story. Mm. And we know all about men when they talk about fishing. You know, they may have caught a fish this big, but mm. when a man will tell his story, his fish was that big. Mm. So the Maui's went fishing, they fished up all sorts of islands. They may have fished up Atta. One of our stories says that Atta was the first that's um, right. Mm. Island to be fished up. Mm. Another story says that when they went, they fished up Tokelau. Mm. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to be very, <clears throat> we're going to honour all the stories from our myths. We're not going to say that that Tokelau wasn't first, Atta was first. Mm. We're going to say that this story said this. This story said that. All mm. we know is that we have these wonderful islands and they started, they came, oh, and we know that some of our, mm. yes, we know that some of our islands, when they talk about going into, see what, when they talk about going into underworld, when you think about that island in Baba'u, Koloa, which is said to be the gateway, the gateway, to, gateway the underworld, to the underworld, and that's where Maui mm. went down to grab, you know, to grab the, the fire. fire. The fire. When we think about it, we are mm. on top of volcanoes, everywhere in the islands, in Tonga. We're sitting on volcanoes. That is why the vol those two volcanoes decided to explode and peep up mm. out of the water. It's the way it is. So we're all sitting on these very live volcanoes. Maybe that's where some of our fire came from. But our people in the past told these stories to tell us this is what happened, that there is fire underneath. Isn't that clever? Mm. What they're saying is that there is fire in our underworld. And we, we originally came out from fire. Well, <laughs> that's the other stories yeah, too. Yeah. But what I'm trying but, but to say give, is mm. they're giving us an indication of what our lands are sitting yeah, on. The, yeah, the Sitting on volcanoes. And under, under, underneath. Uh, yes. Very scientific. Very in that, scientific. That regard. Yeah, I, and when I you see. think about what mm. they've found out, we are sitting on top of all sorts of live volcanoes. Yeah. That you know, the, um, that the the each, ring of fire, as they call it, yes. <laughs> Pacific ring of fire. Yes. Uh, so we're sitting on mm. the Pacific plate, which is just moving and moving. Yeah, but volcanoes, new volcanoes, the new Maui's were born. very clever, I and mean, not only they were um, regarded as gods, but they were also, as you said, they were scientists, they were philosophers. They were artists from all the 
the uh, activities and the, and the works that they had um, produced, they, and they and they left as as part of their legacies for us. Yeah? I think that when you know when you talk about the Maui's and some of the things you know when they when you were saying so they were artists, they were also freedom fighters. I think yeah. the Maui that they were, held yeah. on to the sun. Mm. Uh, you know, I think I know there's a lot of you know. I guess talk about what that means, and mm. you know, I I think it's it's about talking about people who were, I guess, under the you know under the power and control of of the hierarchy, and they you know they were so tired and yeah. you know burdened with all that, so and they couldn't get all their work done. And Maui was I think holding holding on to the studies. Maybe he came and he. He fought for those underdogs or those people who had no power. That's, that's the message, yeah. Yes, mm. and I wonder, yeah. I wonder mm. about that, you know, because yeah. there's always mm. a story on top of a story, a story to describe and to, you know, whatever, a story. So we will all be, we'll just be telling stories. Mm. And I think with this program, what's really important is that people comment and let us know their story or their understanding of a story. Because then what we can do in this program is we can bring up some of those other ways of thinking, other ways of looking at a story, other ways of telling a story about Maui. Wherever you are in the world, mm. this is a program that we would like you to join in yeah. and discuss, you know, give us, you know, talk to us about what you know, what your grandparent told you. Mm what your grandparent told you about the stories that they heard from their grandparents. Yeah. I think mm. these are absolutely important stories for us to, I guess, to resurrect and talk about. Yeah, like, to, to bring different pockets of knowledge or stories into uh, account. Eh? And, and I think with your introduction in the beginning, Lucy, you, you have highlighted the overall idea of myths and legends, hey? uh, the similarities of Prometheus with the story, the myth of fire in Greece with ours, hey? mm. and uh, and maybe you know the story of fire and fishing, as we will come across, were common stories for humanity in the beginning. And, and because it can be seen in almost all cultures, eh? the story of fire, the story of fishing, story of creation, or the myths. Eh? And we can all say, and we can all ask the question, and the question being why does the world share so many myths and legends? Why do we share same stories with Greece and Italy and Turkey, you know, and England and Germany? Why do we? Because they all have similar stories in their mm. myths and legends. Yes. You know? yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and we can all say, I think the people in the past or the wise ones in the past, they all saw, you know, they all wanted to teach mm. moral problems mm. and ideas about behaving well yeah. and mm -hmm. warnings about what happens when you don't behave well and how it impacts culture and community in islands. So I think those were the teachings. Yeah. They are, mm. they, you know, the stories were told so that if I listen to the story and say, you know, this happened, and if she didn't do that, then that wouldn't happen. But if she did that, that would happen. You know, the stories of Maui, the stories of, you know, the Edmatipua and what happened to his sons, you know, when they killed their, his, his son that had the Earth Mother. You know, why mm. did that happen? Yeah. You know, was mm. that, that mm. story is about jealousy. Yeah. You know, when you think about Because the stories, messages, the moral messages are, are always behind. Eh? Yes. And the teaching uh, to teach us, eh? the moral yes. messages to teach us how so to so behave, right. how to start a society. Eh? And, and I think we will we'll go back and forth and worldwide, and I think Joseph Campbell, one of the leading scholars on myths and legend, and among other works like Professor Futahero, with his uh, with his idea that myths 
or myth is the source of history. Yeah, and I have added into it, myth is the source of science. Myth is the, or can be the source of politics. Eh? Because when we call the myths in whatever way, we can find things there for us to learn, things to help us to know more, their wisdom, and, and so forth. Eh? Uh, very important and, and uh, very interesting. I'm so glad and I, I feel the warm, you see, of the warmth and the, and the spirit of, of our ancestors slowly eh, come into the fore. Because we're talking, when we talk about myths and legends, we talk about them. They were the creators of myths and legends. We do. And, and the Maui and the Dangaloa, I think they were great people. Uh, not only they were the creators of myths and legends, but they were everywhere. Eh? They were navigators. They were everywhere in the region. Eh? They, you find them everywhere, and some islands were named after them. They were great people. We should um, we should um, uh, organize a ceremony <laughs> or, or a kadoanga or a, a occasion to celebrate what the Maui's and the Tangaloas, you know, have done to us in the past. Yeah? And I think you know, with every story, and I think with every myth. You know, I think the you know the the honor that we give them is that we talk their stories again and we tell their stories again. I think that's the greatest honor you can give a piece of history or a story or a myth. And I remember um, when you talked about mm -hmm. Professor Fudahelu, and he talked about Vico in one of his lectures. So that's this you know, who yeah. suggested philosopher from Italy? who mm. suggested that we have to take notice of myths and legends. Mm. We cannot just say, ah, oh, that's an old story. <coughs> we need to it's how, tell new stories. That's how the past interpreted or perceived <coughs> things. Eh? Um, and, and I think it was <coughs> very, very important for us to, firstly, as I spelled out before. Firstly, to see myths and legends in their own language, in their own terms, before put in our interpretation. And I am aware of the fact that a lot of countless interpretations of myths and legends, uh, you know, in the case of Tonga particularly. Uh, but uh, Sometimes I, I find it to be a problem <coughs> when we put too much explanation over matters of fact. Uh, and that's why I always come back to the point that we really have to take myths and legends in yeah, to really look what it, what it was really meant to them, to the people, to the Maui and the Dangaloa, eh? Yeah, um, I, as you said, Siwa, you know, that, that sometimes there's too much discussion, you know, about these stories, but for me, for me to be able to understand, I find it um, helpful to listen to discussions of, of people with great minds, and and I do, I, um, um, I like to find out things, it's just the way I am. If I know something that I like, I'll go and find out where it comes from and people who talk about it. And I think you can you can never talk about anything too much, I think. I think it's healthy to, to have discussions. But I think maybe mm. um, what I find unhelpful in discussions is when the discussion goes to dishonoring an idea. That's when I, what I find really um, difficult to listen to if someone will come and say, well, you know, I know uh, Futahelu said that, but I don't believe what he says. Why can't we just say, Futahelu said this, and I've got something else I'd like to add. You know, that I think is an honorable discussion. 
it's a healthy discussion, it's an mm-hmm. honest discussion, and not to put anyone's idea down mm-hmm. because you think that, oh, it's only Mele from next door, it's only Lucy from there, she doesn't really know that much, so we don't need to listen. I think it's like a conversation. And what we know about conversation and how important conversation is, is to honor the person that's talking Mm -hmm. and to listen to their story, to their way of telling the story. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't fit in with your way of telling story, you don't have to believe it. Mm -hmm. But you, you also at the same time, not to put that idea down or say, ah, it's not important because uh, so and so didn't say it. We have philosophers from the past who have told these stories, these amazing stories, and we need to honor that by, you know, listening to who told the story, how the story comes. It may come in various different forms now. By the time it comes to us, it's this and it's that. But then we just take all the bits and see what bits fit in with your idea of the story and what doesn't. Yeah, and, and I think our role, uh, we have we have the myths, myths and legends, mm. Mm. we have the interpreters, mm. we have the scholars, they are uh, three different, I mean, they are different things, issues or, or issues. Yeah? And, uh, and uh, like Professor John Anderson and Professor Fubahero as well followed him, his, um, his mentor and teacher, uh, what we are trying to do with myths and legends is to unwrap the cover up, as they call, so that we can actually, so we can see what really happened behind or within or in the depth of myths of them of the of these uh, issues, eh? and and by doing so, then we won't. Um, Underestimate or or um, or uh, disrespect any view because we all we all attend to know eh? to know more to unwrap the the cover up eh? because Anderson and Fuda thought uh, there might be some cover up that we need to know. Eh? In, in myths and legends and in ancient stories because they had their own way of explaining things as, yes. in, as you mentioned about Vico. Eh? Mm-hmm. It's not only about beauty like um, Professor Agustino Mahena and Kaili, uh, they believe it's all about beauty, you know, myths and legends and Heliaki. That's one reason, eh? but also other reasons as well. Eh? That's how they explain, that's how they told their stories. We tell our stories differently today. Eh? And as Futa said when he talked about, he did the um, uh, considerable works on myths, he, he said, our facts today, our stories today, might be myths in the future. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, because, you know, the Chinese whisper, eh? After years, after centuries, centuries, maybe the Maui, maybe the Maui and the Tanaloa told their story like us, like ours. Eh? They explain things directly, maybe, but through times from whisper, Chinese whisper, from mouth, from mouth that's our way, Tala Tukungutu. Yes, storytelling, tala to from mouth to mouth, from mouth to ear. Yeah. I think I think it's no longer story to say has Chinese changed. whispers. Yeah, because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's because I think everyone has that ability. To, yeah, you know. No, but I mean the problem itself. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know when you think about you know when there's a, uh, an important point that you brought about how stories are passed on. We know even in our day to day lives, you can have your children and you tell them go and do this, and then you hear them outside, they're saying, oh, mum said you do this, and you know you didn't. But they will tell it how they would like to tell their stories. So I guess it's it's only our humanity that we need. It's like a need. 
that we have to put our little bit on to a story so that mm -hmm. we can have ownership, some sort of ownership on that story. But interestingly, Lucy, when I look at the form of the, our myths mm -hmm. and legend, mm -hmm. still there, uh, still there. Mm -hmm. the contents we can, we are open and free to put in, to add in our version to the content. But when it comes to the form, the form of uh, of fishing the land, Maui fished the land. Maui did. Maui did it. rusty hook. Yeah. From a woman. From a woman. Like, like the apple of he. <laughs> well, if I was the wife of Maui Fishponua, and this man, who obviously doesn't go and make his own hook, comes to borrow the most important tool that my husband has, I am not going to give him the best hook. And I'm you know, going to say to him, here, yeah, take that one there. You so, know, the interesting, another interesting thing that Rusty Fisher, uh, no, fish hook, fish hook, sorry, fish hook, was taken, and instead of fish, that's one version, fish up Tonga to be the first, or other, the fish up Tonga. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's a, it can be, you know, it's a, it's a sort of a, 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 a comedy on some level, like a Greek comedy, you know, it's got its terrible things that happen, and funny things that happen and, you know, happy things that happen. So when you look at our myths and legends, it is like that. It's a comical comedy where, you know, here's someone saying, oh, it's a woman. It's a woman's fault, you know, because... And, and from my perspective, I'm going to not give... And if, I'm going, if he's going to come and borrow a hook because he's too lazy to make his own hook, I am going to give him a rusty hook. I don't know how you get a rusty hook. Was I'm, I'm thinking that they would have made hooks out of, of stone and, so, and bone and that sort of stuff. So it seems that Tonga Fusi for Noah, this Tonga, who lived in Samoa, Tonga Fusi for Noah, his name, he knew, eh, uh, as a matter of fact, he knew that his wife would kill uh, Maui. <laughs> Because he could not say no. <laughs> Donga Fusifonua could not say no, you know, so instead of saying no, he heliaki, or he passed the buck on to his wife knowing that his wife would be straight up. Because most women are, they just do it, you know. Men are a little bit, oh, but no, his wife said, mm, there's a hook for you. And I think uh, we can say uh, Donga Fusifonua, he the the good uh, fish hook, eh? a like fish, any fish good hook, fish hook, I mean fish hook. Like any good <laughs> woman who looks after the household yeah. and tidies up things, yeah. she would have known exactly. Maui pushed for no most of it, didn't even know where his bag of fishing hook was. <laughs> and that's why he said to his wife, oh, kofem, you know, where's the fish hook? So she went straight to where it was, all tidy. And, good uh, ones here, bad ones there, gave him the bad one. I'm impressed by this uh, version that uh, the name of uh, the, the man was Tonga Fusvonoa, Fusvonoa to fish, to pull Fonoa, up, land. to pull up mm -hmm. lands, eh? and his name so is Tonga. So he already Tonga. had that name that he had. So it's me, it seems that he was the expert of the whole thing. So yeah. it may mean yeah. that the Samoan were more expert at fishing up land than no. the Tongan. No. Because the, the Tongan went to the Samoan who was already... No, the fact <laughs> is that he, he was a Tongan, lived in, in Manua, because his name was Tonga Fusifono. See what I mean about this discussion? They are going to have, the Tongans will have their version, and, the and you know when, have their version. And you know when they, the Maori have their version. And you all know when they first pull up as one of the versions that you have explained. They pull Tokelau. And, and Tokelau, Tokelau means 
north and north. or north. Eh? Which may mean all the northern islands were pulled up by this rusty fish hook. Rusty fish hook. <laughs> Couldn't pull up Tonga. <laughs> Tonga it was a, 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 a new fish hook. Um, eh? uh, Tonga was pulled up by a new. Apparently he used the same fish hook. Oh! It just so happened that he fished a Tongalau first or Hata first, you know. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And as you said, no, Siwa, it's not about the, um, it's not about, it's, it's not about the contents mm. or the tiny little miniature whatevers. It's about just the story that there was That's right, the story yeah. of Maui, yeah, yeah. wherever he was from. Mm. And he went to this man wherever he was from, he just happened to be, maybe he was holidaying in Samoa, mm -hmm. or maybe he was there because he was married to a Samoan woman who apparently mm -hmm. are the most beautiful. And we know the fact that no Samoan would call uh, 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 the, the, uh, a man with the name Tonga. The Samoans, they, 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 if they have, uh, or if they had a Samoan with a, expanding fish hook at the time, he would be called Samoa. Well, maybe Fusi the Samoan version is not Maui Fusifonua or Tonga Fusifonua. Maybe their version is Manua Fusifonua. We have to find <laughs> that out like as that. we go. But Lucy, I think um, I will pass on to you to to sum up the whole program. Oh, we time, time is running out and. Um, um, thank you for your feedback and for you to, uh, those of you to watch this in the future, but I'll pass on to Lucy to, um, to wind up the whole program now. So I guess the idea or the purpose of this program is for us to relook at some of our old stories of our myths and legend and to pay them homage by telling them or retelling them again in whatever way. So we're going to be collecting stories from all over the place. If you have a story or if you have your version of whatever story we're talking about, let us know. Because we can, we can then bring, the, bring it up in our next program that this is the version from Sione who lives in Samoa and he knows that this is what his mother told him or his grandmother told him. We'd like to hear all your version because I think any version is another way of honoring a story. So we have the story of Maui, the stories of Maui, the stories of Edmat Bua, the gods, and there's many gods in Polynesia that we can bring forth and talk about, just like talking about the Maui. So I am highly excited about this. So excited that I couldn't breathe and, and talk to you in the beginning. I apologize for that. Mm. You know, sometimes with live uh, broadcast, all you can do is try and breathe and get through that bout of coughing. But yeah. And we have the no same. No one to blame. It's just that it's the way same it problem here with our weather and uh, yes. allergy. Allergy. If allergy. you have an allergy, allergy, Canberra is not the place to be. Allergy, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you walk out, I walk out the door and I sometimes can't breathe. So, anyway, I'm so glad that we got through this with uh, not that much coughing, spluttering, and I. I will excuse myself and apologize for that. And I will, you know, hopefully you have a, a wonderful rest of the week and a safe rest of the week until the next program. Malo Ofalahiatu, thank you. Malo Abito, Luciane, I would like to thank you for conducting and leading the program and what you have shared. And for all of you who have um, made comments. Uh, Malo Abito, and uh, before we finish, Lucy, I would like us to go to our main theatre and um, just go through again all the pictures that uh, that we have put yes. uh, in here, mm. um, and and to share and to just re mention them again. We have here Atta. That is and an amazing, amazing, beautiful, amazing, beautiful high, very high, uh, with mountainous um, And they say it's another top of a volcano. Mm, yeah, yes, most islands yeah. are tops 
of volcanoes That's because right. they go all the way down. Yeah. And this, yeah. our scientists have told mm. us that they go all the way down. That's right. To and the, that's that's the the picture or the appearance that uh, Tangaloa Tangaloa ate to Matupu no Tangaloa Fusifonua and Tangaloa I forgot the other Tangaloa uh, the, that's uh, the view that uh, in the sight from from the sky. Ata <laughs> look like that for them. Uh, it looks very flat. Are you sure that's Ata? Yeah, looks from quite flat from here. Yeah, yeah, from at this then. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, amazing land. Yeah, this is. Mm. Uh, you know, because when you look at that and then that's, yeah, see that's, that that's, looks more that's like that's one. It. That's on the from the top. I think, yeah, yeah, from the top elevation. Yeah? Yes. And yes. we have here Tongatapu. Yes. Uh, Tongatapu, Lucy, um, it looks like a fish hook. Eh? Does it? To some extent. Eh? Hmm. It's just like a fish hook. And, and, and uh, Professor Inakifotuakao uh, believe that the story is about also about Tongatapu. Eh? Hmm. Um, something there was central in Tongatapu, eh? yes. because the fish hook, I mean Tongatapu's appearance there looks like a fish hook. Mm. Eh? Mm. But I'll go quickly through them again. Yeah. Let's Ata add again, again. Mm. Uh, because I want to show different pictures of the Maui, how they, oh, that's, Oh, there's a very rough Maui. <laughs> I think there's a very real Maui, the one I can, you know, I can imagine him to look a bit like that. And uh, another Maui, oh. That's a very... It's a very passive Maui, no? Elegant looking yeah. Maui. Uh, very relaxing and it Looks passive. like he's wearing cloth, which I'm sure at that time. Uh, Tapa cloth or, or leaves. He the, is kneeling, he's not standing. That Maui, for whatever reason, yeah. maybe it was yeah. too heavy. The islands were too heavy, and uh, that's, oh, uh, that's uh, a, a good picture. That's, of a good, that's, that actually see, that's New Zealand. Might that's actually Aotearoa. happen. That's North Island, Aotearoa. Mm. Oh, so oh, yeah, yeah, that's yes. New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and when uh, you think about it, when you look at that, that looks like some sort of hook, the shape of the North Island of Aotearoa. That's right, yeah. yeah. They can argue with their version. So that, that's, a, uh, that's a Maori. <coughs> Maui. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh. That might be Hawaii. That might be Hawaii because it looks very much <coughs> like the islands of Hawaii. That, you know. So that might be the Maui of, of, mm -hmm. of fishing up the islands in um, Hawaii. And when you think about it. Um, and here. And of course, here we have the Amunga. Mm -hmm. Trifon, yeah. In Tonga. Among a Maui, so see what with the with the Among a Maui. What is the reason that you named it that that's Maui's Trilothon? Yeah, uh, for me it was a great respect by the Tuitonga, Tuitonga Mombo, the tenth Tuitonga, and uh, okay. in Loao, mm -hmm. Loao Taputoka, first Loao, they were the engineers of, of this Hamonga. Mm -hmm. And I think Lucy, it was a special, um, it was a special respect and dedication to, to Maui, because mm -hmm. that Maui was the first Maui, because the, the full name is Maui, uh, Maui Motua, Maui the oldest, or Maui the old. He was the elder yeah. of the Maui. Or the elder, mm -hmm. the oldest or the elder. Or the yeah. father of the Maui. Yeah, he the was the first Maui who was believed to be under the world. He yeah. was the guidance and the leader of the underworld, Lolofunua. Mm -hmm. So the, the full name is Maui Amotua. Uh, sorry. Hamonga a Maui Motua, mm. eh? Maui Motua Trivathon. Sometimes we just uh, say, you know, in short, Maui, but Hamonga should be Hamonga Maui, but should be Hamonga a Maui Motua, mm. the first Maui, Maui the oldest or Maui the elder. Right. Eh? Yes. Uh, but I think, Lucy, uh, mm. that's all I would like to 
share finally with our audience. Mm -hmm. But uh, malo abito, mo me a, see you next time. Ofalaya.